All right. I don't know. We're going live on yours because this is totally not working. Video sources required. Is that right? This is starting. Yeah, there, you go. there we go perfect all right so uh hello everyone and welcome to um something we've dubbed what have we dubbed it brian uh what are we doing get some fire get some fire i think is uh, is the choice of this we're gonna make and uh, and give and try and give back to the uh, the business community and put on a uh, put on a q and a session every um every monday night it's monday isn't it mate so this is the first one so we did run into some technical difficulties on brian's end of the stream that we're trying to get fixed uh i've got kyle here so uh right before we start kyle does everything look good everything look good on your phone you see it that looks great all right so kyle says it looks great so that means we must be good now can you show me how to do this how do i tell who's watching i see five people on the stream can't tell who they are um, this is all brand new software to us by the way it's the first time we're trying to go live using zoom so uh and then we're projecting from Zoom onto Facebook Live using some uh, using some software. So obviously, over the next few weeks, we'll get a little bit better at it. Um, I see there's seven, eight of you on the stream now. So thank you so much for joining. Um, basically, the point of this show is to uh, is to answer any questions that you guys have on entrepreneurship. Maybe talk about uh, our week, some of the lessons we've learned as we've been going. And uh, you know, Brian's the quieter one of the two, so we're just trying to ease him into podcasting and get him uh, get him used to talking on camera, aren't we, mate? How's your day been, Brian? Day was awesome, other than fighting uh, technology. I'm still trying to get this to go live. Let's see. All right, so Brian's <laughs> still trying to get this to go live, so it's probably not a good time to ask him who he is and what he does. Um, but for those of you uh, watching... It was better in, in the office. Teach me to go home <laughs> early. <laughs> for those of you watching in Apex and for those of you watching on my feed, you all know me. Um, I'm Sam. My background is in uh, in business, is in successful businesses and failed businesses. And uh, what I do now is spend um, a lot of my time podcasting and talking to other business owners and helping to teach um, business owners that are a few steps behind us in the game whilst simultaneously learning from business owners that are a few steps ahead of us. And it seems to work out. Brian, tell the guys a little bit about who you are and what you do, mate. All right. So uh, we, uh, we have a similar story. Um, we both do real estate. <laughs> Um, flipped houses, um, general contractors. Ooh, and the stream's frozen. So that must be a problem from Brian, but... Uh, oh, there, there he go. is. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. All right, so... All right, try again. Technology. Try we'll again, get this mate. figured out. Try again. I'm going <laughs> to so, turn my levels up here. You got me? Yeah. Yeah. And, All right, uh, yeah, so... Um, hold on a sec. Before you go, for any of you guys in Apex that want to jump in on this call and ask us questions, we have posted a link in the group. And for any of you guys on Facebook, I am monitoring the feed and monitoring comments on that too. So if any of you got any uh, questions or comments over on Facebook, toss them in there and we'll get to them. So uh, now it's time for Brian Lewis to tell us who he is, what he does, and why he sounds like Peter Griffin from Family Guy. <laughs> That's what Danny says about me. That's everybody says it, mate. We're just the only ones that are, uh, you know, we got the balls to tell you. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> All right. So um, I'm a dad of six kids. Jesus um, Christ. Yeah. So that's uh, that's that's a highlight right there, dude. Um, it's like Afghanistan, mate. If you don't pull out yeah. on time, you got twenty years worth of payments. You know, I drink a lot. It sounded like a good idea at the time. But, uh, <laughs> no, uh, I love my kids. I love my kids. Five girls, one boy. The boy's number four. Uh, everyone says, oh, you stopped when you got your boy. No, we kept going. So, uh, <laughs> but they're awesome, three and a half to 13 and a half. And uh, I work in the family HVAC contracting business, um, their generation sort of during the day and all our bouts. And then I run a real estate team all around that. So we do the two full-time jobs and uh, try to live life in between that. And I uh, got some investment properties, flipped a bunch of houses, uh, flip cars, flip anything I can flip that'll make money, and uh, similar stories to you. Um, yeah, yeah, pretty similar. Yeah, we had our <laughs> podcast uh, last week. We discovered that we're probably the same person, brothers from another mother. It's it's shocking how many parallels run through our childhoods. I mean, we did both start out broke and start out hustling stuff and start out selling cars uh, that we bought ourselves, reconditioning them. Um, it's surprising how many entrepreneurs have had the same journey, isn't it? Oh, totally. Yeah, it's. Uh, I heard you had uh, Thomas on uh, this morning on his uh, on your uh, small I business did, search yeah. podcast. A friend of ours, Thomas. And, uh, Thomas King. He's one yeah. of us too. Yeah, he's one of us too. Um, I was on his podcast uh, and didn't come out yet a while back, but uh, we grew up together in uh, one town over from each other, and uh, we're in cars together, and uh, 
music and all the other stuff. He used to put the stereos in my car so I could terrorize the neighborhood. You know, <laughs> I yeah, I did too. But um, I kind of outgrew that when I ran out of money. Man, I I used to have this little Peugeot two hundred five turbo diesel. No, it wasn't. It was a non turbo. It was it, it flat out. It did eighty four miles an hour. Um, <laughs> And uh, yeah, we put speakers in it till the fuses blew. I didn't really understand what I was doing. I was just linking all shit up to see how loud we could make it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, all right, let's um, let's move on a little bit, and uh, let's talk about some value because the whole point of this podcast is for us to come out and give a little value to the, both the Apex Group uh, who were on Zoom. And uh, it is open to you guys in Apex. If you want to jump on the chat with us, you can. And then to, to the guys watching on Facebook as well, that because uh, I know you got a big uh, a big following. So tell us a little bit about Ride at Dawn and that movement you've got going on up there. Because it's inspired me to actually get up and uh, put together uh, good mornings, great days. You know, That's oh, Benny joining us. What's up, Benny? Benny jumped in. Benny jumped All in. Right, let's... So Ride at Dawn. Uh, so when I went to Million Dollar Mastermind in Apex, uh, my first experience there, I realized what a slacker I was because everyone gets up at 4 a.m. and goes to the gym and lifts things up and puts them down and all that good stuff. And I hate lifting things up. I don't have to lift up. Uh, so uh, I try not to lift things up if I don't have to. But I said, I got to do something here. Yeah, no So doubt. we started riding a bike. When I did 75 hard, um, you know, biking was one of my workouts. We biked, you know, cold, hot. I did it through the winter. I did, did it through uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas and all that stuff. And uh, bike was the mode of uh, exercise for a lot of it. And uh, so I said, you know, I like biking. Let's go bike some more. So um, got Benny involved. I put a kind of challenge out there to the world. And I said, anyone who wants to join me 6 a.m. every morning, be in my driveway, we'll go ride. And that was my accountability partner because I knew that if I didn't come out in the driveway, Benny would be calling me, telling me, where are you? <laughs> so uh, we uh, made ourselves accountable and we started riding and we were doing it kind of here and there and whatnot. And then I kind of had a streak going before Memorial Day. And then Memorial Day weekend was cold and nasty, and I just didn't feel like doing anything. And Sunday and Monday, Memorial Day, I didn't ride, and I kind of got pissed off that I broke my streak. Yeah. And then, yeah. I, and then Monday, uh, Tuesday after Memorial Day, I committed to go 365 in a row. So so how many are you up day, to now? We're on 77 today. Lucky sevens today. What I want to ask you, though, is what's happened to you in that 77 days, and what's happened in in the social media space that you are in? Because there's a lot of people here watching um, don't really quite understand the results that you can get from being consistent. And 77 days, that's a lot of biking. That sounds like a pain in the ass, to be honest. But in the scheme of things, 77 days isn't a lot of time. So for those people that are thinking about, hey, you know, I'd really like to get onto something like this, tell us a little bit about exactly what it's done for you. So uh, part of this journey... Um... I got to thank Mike Claudio for it. Mike Claudio started doing his 365 live, which I don't think he's doing anymore. But um, he's uh, really, he got that from someone else. I forget who he, I was listening to his podcast and he had got that from somewhere else. But basically he said, if you go through go live 365 days in a row, you're going to have a crazy following at the end of 365 days. He's not wrong. So I, yeah, he's not so wrong. So I said, you know, let's, let's do this. So he was going live at night. I said, you know, I'm going to go live in the morning on my ride. So, we ride someplace fun, a lake, uh, a bay, the beach, you know, the ocean, wherever, mm -hmm. uh, the farms at the farm the other day. And uh, we do an inspirational message and uh, whatever pops into my head. I listen to podcasts on the way out. It's usually about five miles in. We do 10 miles at least every morning. So about five miles in, I listen to podcasts on the way there. Uh, if any or someone's around, we'll chat a little bit and talk about that. And uh, whatever kind of gets in my head is what I talk about. And um <laughs> Yeah. As as time's gone on, I've kind of gotten more attentional. In the beginning, it was kind of just like, you know, quick chat. Now I'm trying to really make it mean something. Um, with that, a friend of mine, um, kind of a life coach friend of mine that uh, she's kind of, uh, uh, what you call it? Uh, we'll call it religious. Um, and she's like, your messages don't mean nothing unless you ground them in the Bible. And she almost challenged me. So every morning she gave me this app that's a Bible app. And every morning it gives you a Bible verse. So now I try and take that Bible verse and I try and relate it to Ryan Stuman's podcast, which, you know, once you get through the motherfucker and all that other stuff, <laughs> I can, <laughs> I can know, put the, uh, I can put the Bible verse in there and the message is aligned. So, uh, it's either, you know, your, I listen to your podcast in the morning, Thomas's, um, uh, Mark's make good choices. I listen to him a lot. Um, and we got to kind of, the message is all kind of aligned and then I put it out there and I kind of regurgitate it into my own, my own thoughts. And, uh, 
We try and change the world with it. Yeah, and what um, happens though? Like just now, we got a message on the stream from Dawn, and she says to you, she says, your messages are great and inspiring. Tell us how that feels, mate. It's amazing. It's amazing. Um, <laughs> I, I never realized it, it's how many people you touched by doing this and how many people have reached out to me and thank me for doing it. Thank me for motivating them. Uh, a bunch of people in Apex across the country are riding their bikes and tagging me and thanking me for, uh, you know, getting them motivated to do it. We got you back out motivated in the morning to <laughs> start moving again. Yeah, and, I mean, uh, it, it does. Though. It's, it's catching. It's infectious. And And what I get from it when I do my lives and when I do my podcasts, is people go on, they, they reach out and they go, man, that was a really good message. You know, you've inspired me to stop drinking or you've inspired me to go walking and shit. And I think that for those of you just like debating whether to do this and see what it does to your influence and how that can affect your business, I think, man, you've really got to take a long look at the amount of gratitude that's poured out because you don't realize that people are looking to be led until you start doing things that makes you a leader. And people say, well, if I wanna be a leader, how do I become a leader? Well, it's start leading. And at first you're leading yourself. And then the next day you're leading Benny. And then 77 days in, you've got bikers from around the world. You've got a Nigerian priest, don't you? Yes, yes. Yeah, coming Father up. Father Eugene from Nigeria. Yeah. Uh, messaged me one day and said, uh, uh, I want to ride with you. I like what you're doing. And he's like, but I don't have a bike. So I said, all right. I happen to have six kids with a bunch of extra bikes. So he rides my daughter's bike. And uh, he's with me on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, usually, if he doesn't have any funeral masses or anything like that going on. And uh, so we started praying during the uh, during the ride because, you know, it's only right. So now we start with morning prayers. And um, there's a uh, Keith Kraft who, uh, you know, is part of the Apex community. Yeah, And for sure. uh, I was listening to one of his sermons or whatever and it was about how the church is shrinking and how we need to bring the church to the people and it kind of rang with me i said you know what i can get up in the morning and i can say prayers with father eugene and we could bring the church to the people that haven't been to church in 20 30 years and give them a little inspiration a little positive message and just trying you know make the world a better place because the world's full of crap oh, um you know i i stopped watching news like legit because i couldn't just stand watching the nonsense i used to be like a, a fox news junkie i'd watch it day and yeah. night listen to it in a car and series it's, X it's and that negativity stuff. that attracts you and it's just you know garbage in garbage out if that's what you're filling your that's head it. with that's just, it mate yes like crap positivity you know, is free being yeah. kind is free smiling at people's oh. free it costs absolutely nothing to be kind and yet we sit here and fill our heads with this doom and gloom shit over and over and over. And we forget that the biggest impact we can have in our life is just being kind and helpful and bringing value to other people. And that for me is what's been like a real defining thing is just showing up time after time and, and helping people out. And you find people start following and saying thank you and the, the thanks and the relief and the joy that these people experience having helped them through stuff is kind of what makes it worthwhile for me and the money just the money just appears you know yeah i kind of you know with the the mindset of apex i kind of uh you know we talk about relationships over transaction that's how i've always done business you know i know a ton of people i like to help people i've always been a connector mm -hmm. and um you know if someone says i need a painter you're going to use benny because i know benny will do the right job elite painting shout out <laughs> <laughs> but uh you know if I, I know Benny will do the right job for them. And if they're going to pay someone, I'd rather pay someone I know, help feed their family. So Absolutely. I try and keep it in, in our network, you know, because, yeah. you know, you know, there's, there's some shady contractors out there and you never you know, hear stories of people getting burned and it always bothers me. And I'm like, just call me and use one of my people that I know is mm -hmm. not going to screw you over. So, um, so I've always done that just, you know, cause I like to help people. And through that process, you know, I meet everybody. I talk to everyone. I talk about uh, being intentional in relationships. I love to talk to everybody. I'll talk to, so, uh, we go to the restaurant Uberosa and we service the air conditioning equipment there. And in the process, I meet all the guys in the kitchen, uh, the waiters, the bartenders, everyone from the bottom up. And when I go in there, they, they're like, hey, Brian's here from, from the back to the front. Like a lot of times <laughs> I stop in there, I stick my head in the kitchen. I ask the guys, hey, what are you making me tonight? And hey, what's going on? How are you? This and that. You know, because people like to be recognized, you know, whether you're whether you're the cook in the kitchen or you're, you know, the server out front or you're the owner. Um I say a lot to all of them. And in that process, you know, you start building relationships in your life and it makes your life better and easier. And, you know, everyone likes to be recognized. And then in the real estate world through that process, I get leads out of it. Everyone's yeah, like, where do you get absolutely. your leads from? It's like, I talk to people all day long. Just yeah. to make, you know, and you like, hey. them. Well, what, what you're missing is like that, that deposit in the karma bank. It's the law of reciprocity. If I yes. do something kind for somebody, 
out of the goodness of my heart, whether I ask them to or not, they they feel a natural inclination to be kind to me. And in a service-based business um, where referrals, like for you and I, I mean, referrals are lifeblood, um, you, you can do so much better by actually just being kind to people and putting value out in the community. Now, we do have a few questions come in over the Instagram because uh, I posted about this uh, yesterday to solicit some questions. Uh, but I'm going to pause us right now and say, guys, if there's anybody on the Zoom from Apex or anybody in the Facebook chat, which I am looking at, Greg getting chased by a German shepherd. Um, I was actually having uh, <coughs> quite the uh, quite the picture of that and you running away on your bike, mate. So <laughs> thanks for the chuckle. But if any of you do have any questions you want to ask Brian or myself, post them up in the chat right now and uh, and we'll jump on them. So I got to figure out what to pick from <clears throat> the Instagram feed while we wait and see if anyone on the live stream shows up. Um, I got to pick from the Instagram feed uh, some questions for us. Um, so, man, this is a loaded question. <laughs> a loaded question from a buddy of mine that I know sells radio advertising. And his question to you and I, Brian, is advertising. What works and what doesn't in today's current climate? How do you feel about fe fielding that one, mate? Uh, you know what? I uh, Hold on. I'll try and get back in here again. Um, advertising. You know what? I think there's a lot of money wasted on paper advertising these days. Does anyone, like, you know, real estate always put their pictures on the bus stop? Are you really hiring your realtor off the bus stop? Like, <laughs> I don't get it. Like, you know, there's a bench at the bus stop. Oh, so-and-so team real estate. I don't know. Does anyone really, I mean, maybe they get business off it. I don't know. But is it, I mean, to me, if you're hiring someone to handle the biggest uh, investment of your life, the biggest worth of your life, you know, your, you know, your house is, you, you know, for most people, that's, that's everything, they, everything they're worth, all their wealth is their house and you're going to hire someone off the bus stop to, to sell it. That doesn't make any sense to me. So, um, you know, we, we talk about no love and trust, right? Well, you know, it's no like and trust. I, yeah. in my version, it's love. I, uh, you know, we have to spread love. So it's no love and trust. Um, my favorite line is there's a reason MTV doesn't show music videos in the last how many years they show reality shows. So, um, people like to, you know, see all the people live they're, they're and they like to be like them and they let learn, you know, they meet the celebrities and, uh, and, uh, you know, so on your on your social media feeds you go out and be yourself and be you know be the reality show this is my reality show this is me living my life and this is me selling houses this is me taking pictures with people that are happy that i just sold their house or bought their first house you know we talked about um how nice it is when uh you get that young couple that just bought their first house yes, that the big joy of the keys here, uh handing them the keys <laughs> and realizing that you know they're gonna have their kids there they're gonna have their their holidays there they're gonna have everything there and you just help them start their life and what you know it's a lot more than just selling a physical structure so back to that on a paper ad like you're not getting anything out of that you know when in this world well, there's where no way to, there's no way to measure it there's no way to quantify it there's no way to to accumulate any data from a newspaper ad i mean i right. get mailings all the time um you know oh just sold house around the block this and that you know we're selling houses in your area and all this other stuff and i've never done it because I look online in the houses in my area and I see who lists them and it's not the people that are mailing it. So right. I'm like, so these people are wasting a lot of money mailing this neighborhood when, you know, maybe they'll get one or two and get lucky, but was it worth the tons and tons of money and time that they invested in this paper advertising or get out there, go on social media, go sponsor an event, be live, be at the event, you know, volunteer in yeah. the community. I'm a big volunteer. So there's a nonprofit farm uh, in our town that I, um, I'm on the board of directors for. I did a lot of it years ago. I helped build the place. Um, Benny helped out there too, painted the farm. It's done a lot through the years. I'm a, a reserve police officer in my town for 24, 25 years, deputy inspector of the reserve police. Um, I volunteer, we do a food pantry scavenger hunt uh, around Easter every year. So uh, what you're saying sure is, went. Get Sorry, I gotta, cut, I gotta cut you yeah. off because, like, you, you, the Brian, the one Brian does like to ramble, fellas. If, no, if yeah. you're just catching up, but what you're what you're generally getting at is that the um, <clears throat> organic marketing has become far more important than advertising oh, in right. our business. So, 100%. let me back up real quick and answer this question for a guy that sells radio advertising. What does the future of advertising look like? Um, you know, obviously, social media is um, huge on this and if, if you're working with a 
client and you're coming and selling them space on the radio, it's generally a different kind of, of, of company um, than one that would be marketing on social media. And I think the biggest mistake most people make is not understanding their message and not understanding who they're trying to convey that message to. Um, you know, and social media makes that a hell of a lot easier to do the targeting and the refinement and everything else. But the majority of businesses that advertise on the radio, um, in my opinion, have been sold something by the guy that sells it in order for him to make some money and the radio station to make some money. And it's not necessarily the most effective form of advertising that's going to move the needle for that particular business. It's just a, a revenue generating tool for the radio station at this point. Um, there's so many better ways to advertise. Even if you advertised on uh, on podcasts, for example, you would still be able to see the demographics of the people that had listened to your ad. You'd still be able to pull data from that. And data is the new gold. So any form of advertising that you cannot collect data from is going to die. I mean, it just has to. And what you're getting mixed up is the difference between marketing and advertising, an organic marketing, which is what you're doing, the referrals, the getting out in the community, the shaking hands, telling a story, having a podcast, having an Instagram channel, whatever it is, that's organic marketing that puts your message out into the community and generates more faith in you and your abilities than any paid ads can run. So for me, with paid advertising, I only run paid ads to houses that I've actually got for sale. Um, everything we do in real estate and everything we do in Media Foundry with media sales and everything we do in consulting is purely organic power marketing from long-term strategies of giving value into the community. So I don't think there's a whole lot of future for radio advertising and for television ads. They've got their place. Um, television ads are switching to streaming ads. So now when you watch Hulu or you watch Amazon, those are your TV ads. But I mean, ca cable I TV ads where I can fast yeah. forward them? No. Um, so yeah, I think the future of advertising is definitely online uh, without a shadow of a doubt. Next question. Greg has got a question. He says, Sam, give me the 60 second version of YouTube SEO. <clears throat> Can't remember, mate. There is a tool that I use, a keyword tool for YouTube SEO, um, and I will go and look in my software package and find it and send it to you. Um, the critical key to YouTube SEO is remembering why people are on YouTube and what your message is that you're putting out. So if if your message is like, you know, trying to, trying to be a plumber, right? You're not going to go out and put, Sam the plumber does this, or join join Greg the plumber on this particular day. You're gonna want to make a video and SEO it around what people are looking for, and that's the key with YouTube SEO. You've got to make it. You've got to make your description, and the title carries a lot more weight than the description. Um, probably about seventy percent of the weight is in that title and that first couple of lines. You've got to make it to not only where it talks about you, but more importantly, where it's solving the question that the person on YouTube is searching the answer for. Because, you, you know, you're not going to... Like, having a YouTube channel and, and being a gamer and all that other stuff, that, that's different. But when you're trying to SEO a particular product or a particular service, always start with the, what problem does my product or service, like, solve? Um, and build that into the title and the description of the YouTube video. And that will SEO it and rank it automatically. However, I have a very powerful keyword tool, and I can't remember what it's called, so uh, I'm going to look it up. And Brian, you got anything to add on uh, YouTube SEO, mate? YouTube's not my thing yet. I've, I got a bunch of stuff up, and I actually just put all my We Ride at Dawn videos that are coming up on there, so you'll be able to go back and watch the 77 videos uh, soon. So uh, that's can't what I'm doing the, there, but that's not SEO. I can't remember the name of this software. Hold on. Uh, <laughs> I'm totally looking it up in my... In my thing it's a it's a keyword tool and it's incredibly good and i don't know how to search my windows pc to find it i bet i could find a link to it but i'll i'll uh, i'll get back to you on that greg but for real and ask yourself what problem is my product solving just like you would in writing an ad campaign and make the description of your video revolve around the problem that you are going to solve for the viewer that's searching for it that's how i seo on youtube um <clears throat> 
But once you get a keyword tool, you can take that problem, plug it into the keyword tool, see what words are getting the most responses, what words are getting the most searches on that particular issue, and then run from there. But I will look up the name of that tool for you, mate. I'm sorry I forgot it. It's been it's been a year since I've SEO'd my YouTube channel, but it, it was a phenomenal tool, and uh, it got us top ranking for College Station Realtor all over YouTube, which was what I was going for. So anyway, any more questions? I don't see any more in the feed. Benny, you got a question for us, mate? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Gotcha. Hey, what's going on, Sam? Dude, what's going good on, to Brian? See you, man. Good to see you. Same here. Same here. Um, I don't have any questions, but maybe I might have a question. Okay. <laughs> um, so uh, I'm grateful to be on this and um, watching you guys, and this is a whole new uh, way of podcasting with video, and I got my little guy making faces and uh, making me laugh now. So um, question to you guys, um, you know, talking about SEO and, and, and marketing and uh, all that other stuff. So yes, organically um, everything is, you know, through Google, Instagram, Facebook, whatever. Um, but do you see that trend changing within the next year or so? I mean, with our service industry, um, we're pushing as much organic content out there without having to pay for anything. Mm -hmm. um, but do you, th do you think that within the next year or so, we're going to have to end up changing some things up with Facebook, especially because a lot of my leads are coming through Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, and I just, there's no paid ads. I don't boost yeah, anything. I, mean, I don't do anything. If I, if I was a, if I was a painter, I'd be interacting in local groups. I'd be posting useful stuff. I'd be commenting on people's posts and, and sharing stuff that, that, that they may find interesting. Um, <clears throat> your target demographic is probably going to be on Facebook next year and the year after and the year after. Were you in a younger demographic? I would say, hey, <laughs> you've missed the train. Hop on Instagram. Look at TikTok. There's a lot of, there's a lot of new social platforms that, that catch the eye of the uh, the younger user and the younger consumer but most of us old people don't want to move all our shit off of facebook um so i don't see your clients going anywhere unless there's something happens with facebook to where it does a complete myspace on itself and all of a sudden there's another uh, platform where you know free speech and there's no censorship and all that other stuff are allowed to exist but again with free speech and censorship as any group moderator will tell you you're constantly trying to keep things in track and in line. So I don't know what Facebook's going to do. However, if it continues on the same trajectory as it's on, I believe the best value for guys like you is starting and owning and running their own groups where you're giving value to the group and then posting in other people's groups local to you and being a guy that gives so it could be as simple as for a painter, hey, we're restoring these, you know, 1940s sash windows today and they've got the lead weights in the sides and we're going to pull these windows apart. I'm going to do it step by step and show you how we do it. And that posted in community groups, people would watch and people would share and it would embed you as an authority on painting. Now, if you make one video, no. <laughs> you'll go nowhere but like right. i did like i did with the virtual tours which i stopped doing them because we were getting so much business from them and my passion isn't really in selling real estate i don't know i should say that too loud my passion's serving and helping people real estate's just the vessel and i got completely overwhelmed and then with the market doing what it's doing it got harder and harder to book the shoots and but what it did that year of me doing consistent content, walking around houses, talking about, you know, whatever was on my mind, but always real estate related, always real estate related, like getting pre-qualified for, for a mortgage or, or whatever it was, that established me as somebody that <clears throat> was validated within the industry that people would then on Facebook, they tag me and post, hey, I need a realtor. And they tag me. And then when I get that tag and when my phone rings, it's not oh, can you come and give us a listing presentation and tell us about yourself? It's, hey man, we've seen your videos, can you come lift our house? And it's as quick as that, it's as simple as that. So for you, Benny, I wouldn't move away from what the, the, the Facebook stuff that you are doing. I would actually lean into it a little bit more 
and just focus on <clears throat> building out a workflow for distribution for the media and having a process in place to where I know that when I make one piece of content, it's going to go in columns A, B, and C on the spreadsheet. It's going to go to rows D, E, and F, wherever it goes. And each one of those is assigned a particular, it's a Facebook group, it's a, it's a page, it's a story, it's whatever it is. But every single piece of content that we produce, uh, with the exception of this one because it's brand new, has its own literal path that they take whether it's a YouTube video and it goes here, or whether it's uh, a, an Instagram reel. Um, generally, when we make a big piece of content, we follow that process and it gets cut up and repurposed as other smaller pieces. But there is a set down path of where the content goes, which helps you to hit more groups for the same amount of money. And y you're making this content anyway. Why would you just post it in one place? Why would you just post it on your page? You know? Right. And right. You know, like Benny has great content. Uh, the, the stuff he puts out is really professional, really good. Um, well, this is this is the second question, and I'm sorry. Before I forget it, Brian, I'm sorry to interrupt I, I, you. I, I, the the content that you know I work with my marketing guy on mm -hmm. is for my Facebook business page. Okay, right. but when we put that out there, you know, I share that content to a bunch of mom groups and stuff like that. Do you share it from the page? I share it from the page. So yeah. here's the question uh -uh. to you now. Uh -uh. So now, should I change that up? Because I'm getting more traction on my personal side. Yeah, yeah. So Facebook is very much pay to play. So any kind of business stuff that's shared or, or, or spread around, they, they want that. They want you to click that boost post button and get eyeballs on stuff. Um, the way we found that works is like just taking more time and again, like, I don't do this. I have a team that does it. We, you know, we, we've got a staff that do it. But you take a little more time and you make an original post in each group. Like, I get lazy sometimes and I'm just sitting down. I'm sharing stuff on my phone because, you know, I want it to get it shared. And I see the video and I'm like, oh, I'll share this in other places. But, like, if it's, a, if it's a genuine upload to the group, it will get way, way, way more views than just a share from a business page business pages are good for validation but the time where business pages get traffic and profitable traffic has long since passed um you know we've got two and a half thousand followers on my business page and i can make a post and i'll get three comments and i can make the same post on my personal and i'll get 150 you know and to me it says that sharing from business pages is pretty much dead. Post your content to your business page. Absolutely. Right. By all means, it's going to validate you. When people come and look up your business, they're going to scroll back through that page and go, okay, this guy's pretty active. He knows what he's doing and shit. But like, for example, I've got a group down here of dads, you know, fun activities to plan for kids, that kind of stuff. But they all know I sell real estate. You know, it doesn't have to be a group about painters. Who wants to talk to painters? Who wants to listen to painting right. shit? <laughs> But if I'm in a group full of dads and someone says, fuck, I'm really struggling with this project. Can you, can anyone know a painter that can help me? And you run the group, you're getting tagged, mate. And that's yeah. how, that's how the shift has happened. And that is like what you've got to like, really just embrace it. Like most people are scared to talk on camera. Most people are scared to podcast. Most people are scared to do Zooms and shit. Well, yeah, I was scared too. I'm scared right now. Shit, I don't know who's going to say what. But it's, <laughs> you've got to do it and get it out there. And this content right now, not this episode because it's not polished, right. but as Brian and I move forward and we do these consistently every Monday night and we provide value to people that, that are listening, the audience will grow. And when somebody says, oh, man, I need help with my business, they'll go, oh, we'll get Sam. Oh, man, I need help with my real estate shit and I live in New York. Go get Brian. And that's just that's the that's the value that we receive for putting the value out into the world so when you're looking at building a group mate don't build it on something related to your business build it on something you're passionate about be passionate about the group lead the group and just be the guy that's the painter and you'll get the group referrals from being the leader and that, mm -hmm. I, I i don't know how it works it's magic but the law of reciprocity brian you know how this works mate you know what I find, um, Benny, in his in his previous time, uh, we talked about it. He gets a little spammy um, as far as he puts his message out on a bunch of pages, all and people belong to those same pages, and it 
you see the same message over and over and over again, and it starts to be like, all right, we know your pain type thing. Um, we've talked about more of an organic approach. You don't you don't go watch TV for the commercials. You watch TV for the content. So you provide content, and then you throw the commercial in. Um, so you, you you know you show that painting project. Yeah, everyone likes this old house and all those HGTV shows, right? So you show the the content, the entertainment value, the the how to value. And then you put your commercial in the end of it rather mm-hmm. than leading with commercials. I, I yell at my real estate team too. They'll make, a, <laughs> they'll make a flyer up and they'll share it on 18, 20 different pages. You know, buy or sell a house with me. And it's like, no, you know, and you look at the likes, there's like one like and it's their wife, it's, you know, it's their friend, you know, it's like, that doesn't work. People don't want to be spammed. You know, people don't, they, you know, people want to engage. They want to look at content that, that they yeah. enjoy. They recognize adverts right away and they just switch right off. Away. Um, yeah. They're looking for, and it, it's back to those three fundamental E's. Um, they are on the internet to be entertained, or to be educated, or to be engaged. They want to feel part of something. They want to learn something. They want to laugh at something. They don't want to watch adverts. I don't get on my phone on the couch after relaxing at night and go, ooh, let's look at some adverts. I don't. I want to be entertained, or I want to talk to people. I want to feel a part of something. But the last thing I want to do is see an advert. So by providing that value up front, it's never an advert. It's always a referral. At least that's how it's worked out for me. So the so let me understand this correctly. So as far as my my personal page that I you know I'm on Facebook with, um, stop creating the content on that, or should I create another group, like a group? <laughs> yeah. So you're gonna want to share the content to your personal page. Okay. Right? That's then, fine. then you're going to want to re-upload it to your business page, just so your business yep. page has the validation. I wouldn't expect yep. a lot of traffic from that business page. It's going to ask you, you want to boost posts and all that stuff. And you can, you can go in and do marketing and, and advertising in there, and you can build custom audiences. That, but is there any need to spend that money at the level that your business is at? I don't think so. I think that no. we we can generate enough jobs for you organically without using advertising campaigns just by straightening out what you're doing on Facebook. And you're going to post the content to your personal page. You're going to post it to your business page. And then whatever group you start, you know, you're going to post in there, but you're going to post the, the, the motivational videos. You're going to post the video of you riding with Brian. You, you're going to be like a leader of the group. And that has nothing to do with showing painting videos it has nothing to do with showing any kind of commercials it's just hey i'm benny i own this painting company uh, and today i'm riding my bike like that's it like people know that i sell houses they know i sell houses they know I, i have a media company but i don't sit there on my podcast and talk about how i sell houses or how i sell media that's just people knowing that's just a byproduct of me putting out the content does that make sense 100%. 100%. 100%. All right. Well, cool. What's next? It's 8.15. We got, a, we got a little bit more time on the chat. Like, we can go anywhere with this. I'm, I'm all good. If you guys have questions for me or if you want to talk about the news or current affairs or if you want to talk ooh. about whether you've had your vaccine or not. Oh, shit. I don't know to go there. But to we go hop there. on a plane and jump off. <laughs> nothing's off limits here but like seriously any more questions i'll take them or we can just we can just chat about the the weather and no. what beautiful weather we're having in texas too Brian, you have anything i want to know what benny thought of apex live oh, Benny's oh first time seeing apex in person it wore him out i know that yeah it we definitely did sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> i mean that's that i'm never gonna i'm never gonna that, live right? that one down no no, no. That's, that's it it's over um, what did I think of Apex Live? Let me tell you. For the first time doing something like this and being part of a group, uh, what, what am I, three, three months in, I think, Brian? Yeah, I think three yeah. months, right? We, we joined, you joined right after me. Uh, that was like, what, beginning of May, right? End of April, something like that? Something like that, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's it just the experience alone. Just to be following a person like Ryan Stuman, Tom Keenan, uh, Mike Claudio, um, you know, just Jessica, obviously. Uh, Jessica is my coach. Um, but the experience alone to see these guys on stage and to be in front of them and shake their hands and take pictures with them. It was just like, I'm starstruck. Right. Cause I, I'm not around this all the time. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, Ryan, I mean, like listening to Ryan's motivational Mondays and his podcasts and Tom Keenan. And I just recently started to uh, listen to yours, Sam. 
Um, Tom was the guest on mine today. If you got a minute, it, yeah, it was, was a great a, show. It was a good. I'm episode, definitely, man. definitely going to listen to it. So yeah, hundred percent. But I, I mean, a, an amazing experience. I absorbed a lot. Um, obviously, when you want to lead there, you want to try to implement all this stuff in one in one uh, take. But you can't because once I pulled out of there, I already had a goal set in mind with Jessica that that Wednesday after I got home that I was going to implement the core values into my, into my business. Mm -hmm. um, and I had a group setting. Uh, it was a team meeting. First time I had slideshows up, I presented. Um, and let me tell you the experience to watch these guys speak and to say, I, I don't think that I could do this to actually sitting in front of my guys, even though I felt comfortable with them, mm -hmm. but presenting something to them that my marketing guy and myself put together slideshows with graphics and all kinds of stuff and data and stuff that I've been following. It, it just made me a totally different person. I've totally changed my mindset three months ago, but before that with the alcohol and all that other stuff, it's just totally blown my mind and what I can do to listen to people like that and to change my mindset, to follow in their footsteps, mm -hmm. to follow Brian, to follow you, and it's just totally made me a different person, made my life at home so different. And I'm starting to see a following myself too. So not only am I, my guys embracing me and, and are inspired by me, but I'm inspired by them because I'm motivating them. They're motivating me and we're all working together as a team. And they understand what my core values are in my business and what I need to make customers extremely happy. And that's why we're elite. And that's why we do the things that we do, you know? So my take on Apex Live, I'm going to everyone. <laughs> I think my wife overheard that. <laughs> hey, Benny's Does wife. Benny's wife. Does he's co he's coming to everyone. He's coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Bring her too. She might like it. Shit. <laughs> I'm definitely, you know, she's starting to change, you know, a little bit. And she understands and... It does. It's, it's a good thing. The funny thing about this, man, is it doesn't only change you. It changes the people around you too. The, pe the people yeah. around you see what you're doing and like, hey, maybe I can go a little harder. Maybe I can do a little better. Maybe I can change some shit up. So, yeah, for for me, it's been um, like I've been doing it uh, almost eighteen months. I've been in Apex, and um, you know, I'm fallible. Like I fall off. Like some months I eat cheeseburgers and pizza and don't fill out my G code, and I feel really bad. And then some months I fill everything out and I, I get halfway through 75 hard and, you know, I, I do real well. And you can't be perfect all the time, but shit, this this really has given me a, a framework and a foundation for being somebody that is like just actually a, a decent human being with his shit together. <laughs> it's uh, so, yeah, it's been uh, just to say life changing is, is like it's often overused. But this this is a program I don't ever see not being a part of. And it, I, I tattooed fuck your excuses on my wrist you know I'm not, I'm not going anywhere you know yeah it's for real now it's for real it's, yeah it's can't undo it you know. can't undo you know, it's funny though we have we have all these excuses all the time and we they come in our mind and we're just like we're engulfed with all this stuff so you know i've been trying to push that all those excuses out of the way and how hard i have to work to get somewhere but you know what at the end result you know when you actually do the work and you start to see the stuff come back at you it, it's just amazing how things change and things become better and easier. And, um, you know, I'm I, right now I'm, I, you know, I'm not intentional too much on Facebook and I'm trying to stay away from Facebook right now. Cause I'm so busy building my business and I'm working on my business instead mm -hmm. of in my business and implementing all the systems that I need to implement it to allow it to run. So I can actually work harder on my business to become more successful in what I do. So, I mean, Brian sees it, there's a lot going on. 100%. I'm a long way and you know in in all service industries right now even with real estate you guys see it that the the market has been crazy and mm -hmm. for us too i mean the phones have been ringing constant if i if i could say 10 to 15 calls a day that's a lot yeah, compared yeah. to like two calls a day or two calls every other day you get a bigger to, crew benny and get some more guys yes well that's one of that's <laughs> that's one of our goals band, yeah. yeah that's that's one of our goals for the next three months is to create a, a third team uh, to go out there and 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 you know service dude just service go to, just go take over do struggle, it. take over a struggling painting company just expansion uh, by aggression mate we we talked about that we've done that in the ac world we've uh so through our our vendors in the ac world 
Uh, they know who's paying their bills and not paying their bills. So the people that sell hardware to the other other contractors, they got uh, so and so hasn't paid in six months. They're struggling. Yeah. You know, reach out and see if they want to sell. So a lot of our leads come through the vendors, and they say, you know, Joe Schmo Air Conditioning. Uh, you know, he's struggling and we go have a conversation with them and basically we kind of help them get out of trouble however we can. We take over their customers and their business and um, whether we buy the company or we just pay off their debt and take over the company to get them out of debt and they're happy to run away and, and not, you know, have to bankrupt. Um, we've acquired a bunch of smaller and medium-sized air conditioning companies over the years and brought their whole customer and the guys and trucks and all the other stuff. And that's one of the quickest ways to scale is to just to literally find a guy that's retiring, find a guy that's struggling, find a guy with health issues. Uh, a lot of contractors, and you know, we've all seen this, a contractor is the guy, the top foreman that decided he didn't want to work for someone anymore. He knows nothing about business. And exactly. obviously, yeah. you know, it's a common scenario. These guys can work 90 hours a week and they, they're the best painter, the best carpenter, the best electrician in the world, but they don't know how to run a business. So when you know how to run a business, and they're struggling and they're probably really good at what they do, but they're so bad at running a business that the business is failing that when you grab them and start to run the business the way it should be run and start to make them productive and not running in circles, you can take the failing company and turn it around just by proper management. And then, so in the, in the idea, you basically buy it, bring them along for the journey, say, hey, here's the deal, I'm gonna buy your company, you're gonna come work for me now and you know, make them into a, a project manager foreman and stuff like that, you know, salesman, you know, cause they know the business really well, they just don't know how to run the business. And said, a lot of times you can buy them pennies on a dollar when when guys are just had enough and they don't want to work 90 hours a week anymore. And, they, you know, they're working hard, working hard. Uh, it's a big opportunity out there. But one of the great sources that we did to buy businesses was through the vendors. So through your paint supplier, talk to them about what painters are out there or having trouble paying their bills and then go out and talk to them and see maybe they'll you know, want to come work for you. Maybe they want to, uh, you know, take over their customers, take over their phone number. You know, Yeah, because these, uh, these guys that are behind on their bills, oftentimes they know how to paint. They just don't yeah. know how to generate leads. They don't know how to generate yeah. business and they don't know how to run the company. You know, painting is about 10% of the skill set of actually running a painting business. And you you know this, Benny. I mean, you're finding it out every day that operating the business is a whole lot different than operating a paintbrush. You know? 100%. Yeah. So go go find somebody that's 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 struggling and go go buy him out, make him a foreman, you know, and uh, help him generate these leads and help him you know put him to work man because they want to work they just don't know how so right that's how these cases these guys were these guys were thankful i mean they were they were you know way over the head struggling you know like i said losing their house losing whatever because they couldn't figure it out and uh made a bunch of mistakes or you know couldn't estimate you know estimating we all know estimating is the key to uh the business you know but usually the guy that gets a job is the guy that made the biggest mistake in the estimate, you know? So, um, you know, it's, <laughs> oh, it's the that's truth so that. true. That's so you know? true. So when, yeah. you know, when, when we're bidding a job and it's, uh, you know, everyone's out a million bucks and one guy comes in at 700, you're like, Whoa, what'd you miss? <laughs> you know, there's always and, something, you know, you know, they miss something because there's no way they're doing it for 300,000 less, you know? So, right. uh, that happens all the time. It's, you know, sometimes we've actually even called them and said, you realize you're like a lot less than everybody else. You probably missed something. You might want to go back and check that, you know? Um, that's something else we talk about being friends with your competitors, because, uh, you know, if you're within a couple, you know, 10, 20, 50 grand, maybe when they're 300,000 off, I'm like, yo, buddy, you better go check your numbers because you're way off the number. And sometimes they appreciate it. And go, oh, man, I forgot to add the insulation, <laughs> you know, and it's like um, the other thing that uh, is joint venture stuff. Um, we talk about, um, you know, sharing manpower. You know, I'm going to lay some guys off because we're slow, but, uh, you know, competitor, uh, you know, we kind of have a gentleman's agreement that, listen. You know, I got six guys I don't need right now. You're busy. Use my six guys for the next month or two. When I get busy, I'm going to take my six guys back. And so he might be slow, and we'll take his six guys. You know, that's stuff that used to go on, you know, in the market as far as being able to, uh, you know, just because, you know, it's cutthroat. Yeah, we're all competitors. But at the end of the day, we're all in this together, trying to do business together, trying to make this and trying to, to feed our families. So, you know what? You don't have to cut your, the throat of your competitor. I mean, some guys are obnoxious, and, you know, maybe you don't want to deal with them. But most – most of your fellow contractors are decent guys trying to make a living and, you know, trying to feed their families just like you. So when you can work together and, and let them know, hey, dude, you're $300,000 less than everybody else. You're going to lose your shirt on this job, um, you know, like that type of stuff. You know, sometimes they don't want to listen and then let them go to the fire. But, um, <laughs> you know, it's just, but, you know, being a good person. It's just back to what we talked about. You know, yeah, just, most just of the doing time, the right thing all the time. Most of the time they'll, they'll be thankful for that and they'll pay it forward to you uh, at yeah. some other point in time. So, yeah, that's you should always well, do, do the right is, thing. 
Yeah, hundred percent. But le- like my competitors too. Like there's a couple of guys that I associate with that when I know that I'm extremely busy and I don't want to get myself stressed out, I I unload the jobs to them and I say, hey, look, you know, don't I don't need anything. Just do the right thing. Just make sure you service those customers the way I would service those customers. Mm-hmm. And you know, feelings mutual, but. It's funny that I unload a lot, but they don't unload back. So it makes me, it makes me know that I'm doing the right thing as far as lead generation. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm getting the leads because of what's happening. So I've, I'm established. I'm doing quality work. You know, my guys are very professional. We're very clean, you know, so some guys just go in there. Scaling is next for you. Scaling that business up, put put another truck. But, you know, Sam's 100% right. I mean, it's time to start looking to possibly buy out another contract. There's got to be someone that's looking to retire, someone in the neighborhood that's been doing it their whole lives, and they don't want to do it. They want to go two days a week, three days a week, say, Mm -hmm. do a slow buyout. You know, they work for you for a year, maybe three days a week. And then, you know, as they kind of start phasing themselves out and they go retire, you know, maybe have them just as a a checking jobs, working half a day, starting the guys in the morning or something like that, and let them, you know, let them phase out. Because obviously their customers no love and trust them. So the minute you walk in, they're like, who the hell is this guy? You know, so you want to keep right. that owner involved, you know, as long as the owner was doing the right thing for his people. Because, uh, you know, in a business like ours, people deal with the owner. I mean, people deal with Elite because of Benny, you know. So Benny wasn't mm-hmm. there and Sam stepped in. They're going to go, who the hell is Sam? You know, so, <laughs> um, you yeah, know, where'd this guy from England come from? Trying hey, to do, bad, up in, up bad in New York example. painting. Bad example, because I apprentice as a painter, so I can uh, I can definitely hold my own. You can uh, do it. You can do it. I'm not scared, go. man. How do you think I knew how sash windows worked? Yeah, I just <laughs> I smile I, I, I smile when you said sash, and I'm like, ah, oh, <laughs> I know this stuff. We, yeah. we were in the elevator at Apex and uh, Apex Live, and I was telling Benny, you know what a goal should be? You should have another uh, painting business down here, an elite painting in Texas. This way, you know, when you go back and forth between live, you're checking your business, you know? So yeah, it's, yeah, it's a dual it's, purpose thing. Write it off. All right. <laughs> It's, <laughs> it's about time we wrapped up for the evening, fellas. Um, I don't know that we've any more questions, but my goodness, I've had a lot of fun. Have you guys had fun? 100%. Yeah, right. it was excellent. Cool. Yeah. You down to do this next week, Brian? Definitely. We'll figure out how to make this work. It worked good in the office today, but now tonight... The, the, we had a little hiccup starting out late, yeah, with the stream, but we'll we'll figure it out for next week. Um, it did work very well on the dry run we did earlier this afternoon, but for some reason, uh, there was an error somewhere between Brian's keyboard and his monitor, so we will get that fixed for next week. <laughs> it's a loose nut behind the keyboard, you know? There's always a loose nut behind the keyboard. So, all right, on that note, on that bombshell, um, it's time for us to wrap this up. Um Benny, thank you for coming and hanging out with us. Uh, Brian, thank you for co-hosting. And guys, thank you for watching. We will uh, keep doing this. We're going to build it into a Monday night Q&A session. Um, It is uh, for the guys in Apex that want to come hang out and ask questions. But it's also uh, live on Facebook if any of you want to jump in next week and uh, have some questions for us. Um, Before we go, guys, tell us where people can find you on Instagram or follow along. Yeah, Brian. All right, so for me, it's Brian Lewis Realtor on just about every platform. It's either Brian Lewis Realtor spelled out or Brian Lewis RE, Twitter and stuff like that is RE, you can't fit Realtor. Um, BrianLewisJr.com gets you to my website. BrianLewisRealtor.com gets you to my website. And uh, yeah, that's it. Benny? Personal side, Benny, uh, Facebook.com slash Benny Montalbano. Instagram's the same thing, Instagram.com slash Benny Montabano. And then Elite Painting Services Plus.com. I know it's very long, but yes. it was my original business name and I'm holding on to it because <laughs> I have I, I've had that for a long time. So and then with uh, Facebook, it's Facebook.com slash Elite Painting Services Plus. Well, guys, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on here, and hopefully we can do this again week after week after week. Um, and you all can find me at Small Business Surgeon on Instagram and on iTunes and all places you get podcasts. Uh, check out today's episode. It's got Thomas Keenan in it. He came yeah, on and did great. a wonderful job. And uh, fellas, let's plan on this for next week. It's been great. And thank you guys awesome. on uh, Apex, and thank you guys on Facebook for watching. We will see you all very, very soon. All right. Thank all right. you. Night. We'll see you Thanks in the morning. Right at dawn. We'll see you. <laughs> Tune in. All right. Have a great night, everyone. Good night.